Everything I've seen and heard about this upcoming single-player third-person action sci-fi RPG has me really interested. Exodus was announced back in December of 2023 and it'll be releasing on PC, PS5, and Xbox Series X and S. We do not currently have a release date, but many are estimating 2026. This game is certainly well into development though, and the devs keep trickling out new information and videos, but unfortunately, we currently only have about 16 seconds of actual gameplay. With that said, cinematics seem to be a really big part of Exodus and its story portrayal, so I've been soaking them all in. Tom, stay down. She put her life on the line to bring back artifacts to put us on the path to scientific breakthroughs. Archetype Entertainment was founded by two former Bioware devs, James Olin and Chad Robertson, both with very impressive Bioware Golden Age resumes. But it's also important to note that this studio is a division of Wizards of the Coast, which is also, of course, Hasbro. Could be a good or bad thing, but from a resources perspective, seemingly good for this studio, as everything we've seen up to now has been really high quality. Not that this really matters, but the studio even managed to get Matthew McConaughey, who is playing as an important character that is said to be present present from the beginning of the game to the very end. I am kind of getting sick of studios using celebrities as it's clearly a marketing move, but Matthew is obviously a very talented actor and I'd say seemingly fits well for a role in a game like this as he did do a phenomenal job with Interstellar. Unfortunately for their victims, the Mariyama are interested in more than just stealing cargo. They want minds, memories emotions. But what exactly is Exodus? Many are currently making the comparison to the Mass Effect franchise, which makes sense as many of the devs at Archetype I heard worked on the Mass Effect games. We do know that the game will be mission-based, so do not expect an open world or should I say galaxy, but it's important to note that mission-based does not always equate to linearity. We will be exploring the stars though, and this journey will take us across the systems of the Centauri Cluster in our hunt for celestial remnants. More on the story and universe later in the video, it will put much of this into perspective, so stick around. Some of these locations that we visit will include ancient ruins of long dead civilizations, deadly celestial strongholds, and plenty of interactions with very strange alien creatures and societies. Chad Robertson did tell IGN that we will be able to go back and revisit planets that we have visited before and have access to areas we could not previously reach. One of the core design pillars that Exodus is being built upon is player choice and consequence. Now I know those words don't hold as much meaning anymore due to many studios using them as more of a somewhat deceiving marketing play, but I do have to say that the way that Archetype discusses this topic, it does really make it seem like this is the game's most important feature of its design. Your choices are gonna to continue to have an impact throughout the entire game. A choice that you make before your first Exodus might have big consequences upon your return. But there might be even bigger unforeseen consequences from that same choice after your next exodus. The consequences of some of your choices in Exodus are said to continue to have impact throughout the entire game, with some consequences not being seen or realized for years or even decades. I'll expand more on this in the story section, but it deals with the concept of time dilation due to traveling in space at very high speeds. Expect plenty of evidence of choice of impact on the loved ones that you leave back at home, progression options for your character, your home, world, and civilization, and also some crazy outcomes with companions. The ending of Exodus is also said to be a defining feature of the game, and we are told that some players will experience completely different endings from others. Your character, the player character, does have a name, and that name is June Aslan, and this character is fully voiced and also has a very important backstory. With that said though, your character is still said to be customizable, and I would assume that this will also include a handful of different voice options. June is the heir of Orion Aslan, a hero and leader of the Aslan dynasty, and Orion had quite the resume of hunting secrets and alien technology. Your mother, Ava, was born of celestial heritage, and because of this, you inherited 
the gift of neural induction, which allows you to interact with celestial technology unlike other humans. Now, it might be confusing a few of you, but celestials in this game are a group of alien beings that have evolved from the early humans who first settled the Centauri Cluster, and they're currently humanity's greatest enemy. Much more on that later in the video. Companions are, of course, a very important aspect of this game as well, and aside from providing extra firepower and support to us in missions, we can expect companions to also offer guidance and insight, friendship, and also romance. Your character will be the leader of a traveler dynasty, and this will include the companions that we meet along the way, but also other allies such as soldiers and scientists, assassins, and inventors, and what the game calls changelings and awakened. Speaking of awakened, this this pig right here named Charlotte is an example of an awakened animal that I'm assuming will be around quite a lot. But lore-wise, humans' use of advanced biotech has allowed them to be able to unlock the cognitive potential of some animals and enhance their natural abilities. Charlotte, for example, has a 10,000 word vocabulary and greatly increased agility, sense of smell, and bite force. But back to actual companions, currently only two have been revealed, but on the Exodus website we can see three silhouettes of other companions yet to be revealed, so perhaps five in total? Tom Vargas, the star of the cinematic reveal trailer, is a charming rogue who suffered extensive experimentation by an enemy military. And Elise is a no-blunt, no-nonsense sleeper from the 23rd century Earth, and she is an experienced mercenary, weapons expert, and a former gang member. More on companions here on this channel as we get closer to the game's actual release. Although we don't have much gameplay to go off of, combat will be action-based, and we players will be relying on a combination of stealth, ingenuity, and of course firepower to deal with our deadly opponents. Our character June does have some special unique genetic gifts that we'll be able to utilize, but we'll also be building an arsenal of weaponry and equipment. In an interview that IGN held with Chad Robertson, Robertson said this, Our combat team is building encounters where multiple solutions are at hand for the player at all times because we want the player to be both thinking tactically minute to minute, but also strategically about how they're going to solve problems in combat. At this time, we don't have much else to go off of, nor do we have much in terms of character and companion progression, but I'll be sure to keep you updated. And let's end the video with one of the most intriguing and important aspects of this game, the universe and the story. Exodus is a narrative-driven game that's clearly going to have quite a few cinematics to help drive the story, but what I love most here is that Archetype seems to really be going all out in terms of creating a fully realized setting with some rather deep lore. Peter Hamilton, a famous sci-fi writer, has been helping Archetype craft the universe, and he even recently released an Exodus book called Exodus, the Archimedes Engine. I'll definitely be reading this before the game comes out. Exodus is also going to be one of the worlds in Amazon's upcoming Prime show Secret Level, which is an animated anthology series. Love to see the foundations of this universe being established and built in other literature and media before the game has even come out. In 2200 AD, the Exodus begins as humans begin to flee a dying Earth by launching fleets of Ark ships out into the galaxy to seek out a new home for humanity. Within two centuries, Earth was completely abandoned. In 18,000 AD, several Ark fleet ships reached the Centauri Cluster, which is 16,000 light years away from Earth and they discover hundreds of densely packed star systems with potentially thousands of habitable planets. These humans would then send out the Green World's signal to summon the rest of the Ark ships, and a slow but steady trickle of Ark ships from Earth would continue to arrive in the Centauri drawn by this green signal. In 24,000 AD, Centauri's history is marked by the violent rise and fall of interstellar empires, and with the aid of genetic engineering, the citizens of these constantly warring cultures rapidly changed and evolved, essentially becoming what humans back on the Ark ships would consider as aliens. These aliens consist of dozens of divergent species, all descendants of the original colonists, and they would collectively be referred to as the Celestials. Now let's pause here for a moment and talk about time dilation, which is important not only to the lore, but also to the game's systems and mechanics. Time dilation in Exodus is increased by the speed at which you travel, and at light speed, time slows way, way down. 
So for those who travel at very high speeds, which the Ark ships are capable of and need to do to reach the Centauri system, days can become decades and even centuries for those that they leave behind. And this is why you see such a jump in years in this Exodus timeline. And this is why all of these Ark ships that came from Earth that are following the green signal are all arriving in the Centauri cluster in completely different eras than when they left. In a way, the Ark ships are traveling into the future. Back to the timeline. The rivalry between celestial empires started the Formation Wars, which obliterated hundreds of habitable worlds across the cluster. And during these wars, arc ships drawn by the Green Signal continued to arrive in Centauri. But many of the Celestials are so far in the future from the arriving humans, and also so focused on winning their wars against rival Celestial Empires, arriving humans were relegated to small backwater worlds and treated like annoying pests. 6,000 years later, in the aftermath of the Formation Wars, a powerful Celestial species called the Elohim rose to prominence and constructed an interstellar network linking all of the systems to the Centauri, and this would be called the Gates of Heaven. The Gates of Heaven began the Crucible Era, which was a new age of exploration and trade. Although the Elohim eventually receded from the galactic stage, the remaining celestial empires continued to obey their laws for fear of retribution should they violate them. In 41,500 AD, a long-lost human arc fleet arrived in the Malak Bell system and established a colony on the moon of a planet called Leiden. They built this colony atop ruins left behind a long-extinct celestial civilization. After two centuries of struggling existence, a human traveler named Orion Aslan, the player character's father, emerged as Leiden's leader. Orion completed several Exodus missions in search of advanced celestial technology to elevate Leiden's society, and he established the Aslan Dynasty, a powerful network of loyal followers to rule over his home world during his long absence among the stars because of, you know, time dilation. Orion realizes that Leiden was slowly dying as it was succumbing to an ancient celestial techno-virus known as the Rot, but stopping this Rot was beyond any human capabilities. Because of this, Orion and your soon-to-be mother, Ava, who was of celestial heritage, sired a child genetically engineered to bridge the worlds of humans and celestials. This child would be humanity's last hope. Orion then embarks on his final exodus, never to return, and your half-brother, Gideon Aslan, seizes control of the dynasty and declares himself ruler of Leiden. This caused you, June, who at the time was still a mere child, to go into hiding. Your destiny in this game is to lead the fight for humanity's salvation by searching for celestial remnants, for even one of these artifacts could contain the power to save your people from the rot. In order to find these celestial remnants, though, you must travel at the edge of light speed to places far away, which due to time dilation may cause entire lifetimes to pass in your absence. And this means sacrifices must be made, and we are told that many of our choices in the game will be impacted based on the decades that pass in our absence. You may find that you have harmed or helped loved ones, but ultimately you can never predict the outcomes that you create in the abyss of time. And one of the big lines for this game is, how much are you willing to sacrifice? There's still so much yet to be revealed for Exodus, and of course, many of us have plenty of unanswered questions, especially regarding gameplay and systems, and I'll be sure to be keeping an eye out for any important reveals. This game has definitely got my attention. I'm loving the established lore here, and if it keeps looking good and sounding good, as it does right now, expect a lot of coverage right here on this channel. Thanks for watching.